Okay, welcome, welcome, welcome. I think it is live. I'm not sure. Um, oh, there we go. We are live. Welcome, friends. Hi, my name is Josh William. I'm an ink artist as well as a multi-various um, skilled artist in various things. And today we're doing watercolor because you know what? Watercolor is what watercolor is. This is Inktology, and if you haven't already, please like and subscribe to the channel. That would help out your dear friend here. And yeah, I'm excited to see what's up and how to do some stuff, you know. Um, sorry for that little glitch in the video. I just wanted to make sure the video was working. I have a commercial break in case I had to go use the restroom. Uh, Myanmar. One of the countries I visited and I made a short little video about fun stuff. But today we're going to talk about Zme. Zme, the three-headed dragon that kills all the people that dares to come against it. What's up, Cresty? Welcome to the YouTube live stream. Mm-hmm. So, welcome, Krusty. Glad to have you here. Um, let me put on some medieval music real quick. I feel like that is a must. Medieval music. Medieval music, no copyright. Here we go. No, that's commercial. Anyway, so I put a second layer of watercolor on top of this bad boy. It was a bright blue, a bright red, a dark brown here or a mediocre brown here. And I kind of covered it with some colors that would darken it. The paper's still a little wet, but I think it's going to work out. We can cover it over and we're just going to do some more details. Hey, Megs. Welcome. Is that a boo or like, hey, boo? What kind of boo is that? I like boo. It's a fun word. I knew a, I knew a person named boo. It's interesting. Um, so here is the first watercolor setting. You can see it's getting more green and has some red tints to it for the flames and the fire. For it is like a very vengeful dragon setting. Um, where I usually go to YouTube and I type in like whatever style movie. So I, I, this one was like medieval music, no copyright. And that's what I put in YouTube. And then what I do is I check in the comment section whether people said you're a liar, this is copyrighted or not. So <laughs> uh, when it says that it's fine, that it works great and people are happy, then I assume that the copyright doesn't get flagged on the YouTube. And as of so far... Um, Nothing has been taken down on my live streams, so. All right, so what we'll be using, these two brushes. I have an artist brush 10 and a three on the brush tips. I've got some really nasty water here. Do not drink unless you wanna get sick. And here's some that you can still probably drink, but you'll probably still get sick. Um, anywho. I'm watching House of the Dragon a lot today to kind of get motivated, you know. I've been doing a lot of video uh, research stuff on just um, random things, but um, if no one knows, I do documentaries, I do filmmaking, so like I've been working on this new pr production of filmmaking on, on the indigenous and cultures that need you know help so um i've been doing all that stuff ghost assistus what ghost ist ghost assist ghost is i don't know what that means but it sounds cool and complicated what's up megs 
You're pretty you're pretty good on these live streams, Max. I'm very impressed. I'm very impressed by your live streams. Um you're you do well live streams and you talk well and it's good stuff. Um I wish I was as consistent as you, that's for sure. Okay, let's get some coloring going on. What I'm going to work on now is probably the ground here. So let me get the camera kind of boop, boom. There we go. So the things we have to remember for coloring the ground is that the fire and the intensity um, here is coming down and bringing light to this area and this area of the face and some of these characters down below. So what we're going to do is go ahead and put the yellow down, yellow orange. So, um, let's get the face of the dragon here yellowed up. Get some of those yellow tints in there. And we'll give in some of the shields of the fallen soldiers. But then we're going to actually do this area down here below the ground. Yeah. I started like 30 minutes early today. I figured I want to get start off and in, in early, but you know, like I always tend to like just keep on going longer and longer, uh, two hours, three hours, not really realizing how long I've been drawing. Once I start drawing, I get lost in the whole process, which is cool, but then it also hinders me from getting good sleep and then like really, really like preparing for the next day. And then I get lost and like by the time I wake up tomorrow, I'll be like, thinking about doing the live stream for tonight. Not a good thing. I uh, need to work on that kind of stuff. Discipline, people. It's important. It is important. Hey, Frozzy. What is up? How's your... Wednesday going. I think it's Wednesday. It's Wednesday, right, guys? Oh, so I had a really fun thing today I had to talk about. Uh, let me drink with something real quick. One of my buddies down here in South California talked about this place called Palos Verdes. And I was, um, he says he does this beautiful drive and he loves it. And I was like, well, what kind of beautiful drive is this? You know what I mean? Like, how beautiful could it possibly be? And I was, he, he's like, let's just drive it. And I drove it, and this place was so beautiful. It looked like Beverly Hills on the hill, you know, on the, I mean, on a mountain. It was so gorgeous. Absolutely insane. Um, if you're in Southern California and you're in the Los Angeles area, screw Los Angeles. Uh, downtown area. You don't need to see all that, but come to Long Beach and Palos Verdes and man, does it feel like it feels like what California is meant to look like when you see it on movies and you see it all on TV. It is brilliant. Um, and I just thought it was really nice. I was so happy because it's rare that you find places that look so spectacular like that in a uh, place that you live. And it's only like, you know, few minutes away so it was really nice 
Thursday where you're at. Oh, it must be morning time then, huh? You're watching from my future. How cool is that? You can see the future for me. <laughs> uh, it's weird how the world works. I was watching Neil Tyson deGrasse today. He was talking about how the meridian and AM, PM, you know, AM means ante meridian, not after midnight. <laughs> And PM stands for um, post meridian because the way the sun passes a center line from south to the north is called the meridian, right? And so when the, you know, from south to north is the meridian and AM, PM. So AM is when the sun comes through here and it hits the meridian, right? But that's AM. This is Ante meridian, which I think it comes from Spanish, and then uh, post meridian comes after the meridian line has passed from the center south to north point of the sun. So AM hits the meridian, PM with that. So it's interesting to see how like these are lines that we calculate and mathematically try to structure. Um, are stargazing right but there's there's not just one line there's mi multiple lines there's another line from the south pole and the north pole north pole where the stars hit because uh, our north star is actually not the original north star that's just the north star for our time period people i think i didn't realize that either is that the north star doesn't all hasn't for for thousands of years has not always been in the position it has in the egyptian days it wasn't the North Star at all. It was a different star, like Titus or something else was a star of the North because the stars rotate because the Earth is wobbling like this, right? Because of the moon, it's pulling it. So even people think it's just circulating, it's doing a, like a, it's sideways circling at a 25 degree or whatever angle. But actually because the moon's gravity is pulling it a little bit, it's kind of wobbling. So because it's wobbling and doing that kind of stuff, you get the star, the stars that we see actually shift and they're rotating, right? Because we're rotating. And um, so when they say that the North Star is this or that, and we look back at the stars that uh, history kind of calculates, it's not actually accurate because it's already changed over thousands of years. Um, and I thought that was cool. I thought, I mean... You know, Neil Tyson deGrasse, he's one of the coolest scientists, I mean, astrologists and stuff like that out there because he he kind of like puts it in layman's terms for us to understand. I super appreciate that. Um, I hate when scientists put things in like super complicated formats where we just, I'm like, what do, you, what do you want me to do with that information, buddy? You know? Yeah, the eclipse, so he, he also explained the eclipse thing, which was kind of interesting, because he was saying, like, so the 365 days of the year, right, and there's 360 degrees is a full circle, right, and each day we move a certain degree, uh, because the sun is at a certain certain point and we're moving around it, but because we're circling, it's a math, I don't, it's, I don't know, this is beyond my intelligence, um, but mathematically, that's why you will get, there's a calculative way of predicting when the moon, because it's on a, in its own path, and the, and the sun is on a certain path, of the, and they finally meet. But after that, it, the, the degrees will always separate it, right? And then it will always come back and then do the same thing. That's how you can calculate it. Um, but 2045 will have another eclipse, uh, but it'll be hitting across America to Florida, from Seattle to Florida. Um, I'll be there for that one, because you know what? I have never seen a full solar eclipse, and I've been wanting to photograph one. And I, sorry, I would have done it this time, but honestly, I just didn't care. But... Here's a fun thought, guys. Uh, technically, towards uh, some scientists that have said that 
the world will probably end within the next 20 years, not due to like, you know, spiritual revelations of mythology or whatever, but towards actual um, us as humans destroying the planet because we have destroyed the economical and uh, what is it? Um, agricultural stuff is very likely. So they actually only give us like, sadly, 20, 30 more years to, as humans before we crumble to the ground. Which when you think of it in our age, like, I, I thought that was a joke, right? Like, think of it as a joke. But, but you got to look at it this way, too. We have progressed in the last 20 years more than any time period in all of any civilization ever because of technology and science and the growth of information. And it's kind of interesting because I'm not one to believe in um, religious, you know, apocalyptic mythology and stuff like that, but... It was said to be that when our when our knowledge doubles and doubles over again, we would we would all crumble and die in Revelation, right? Um, but at this point, we have the ability to travel to space. I watched two space shuttles rock like launch off like this last week. That's crazy. And possibly because of our greed and our desire to expand and grow without taking care of the human race the way we should and pollution and all that stuff and global warming, you know, it is very highly likely that we will become an extinct people because um, we're not really caring. And then our politics doesn't really believe in a lot of this stuff because they're like, oh, global warming is not real or this and this and that and that. But the scientists who love the earth and want to protect it are trying to, you know, take care of it and tell people, but humans are humans. So... 20 more years and we might be all gone which would be sad because I still want to have children and I still want to like go to baseball games and do these fun things but uh, it might be stolen from the fact that humans are uh, we're a virus you know we're a terrible darn virus what do you think Sorry to make it a depressing thought, but you know we have to we have to think about things. We have to change the planet. I'm not going to be able to change the planet though. Oh, battery exhausted. Okay, battery back in. Magic! Sorry, guys, for that momentary uh, bloopity bloopity blop. Okay. Um, anyways. That's why life is important for you to cherish what it is right now. You know, you have a few moments in life to cherish, cherish it, you know, enjoy it, love it, be with family, be with friends, be with those who you care about, do the things you want to do. Don't do the things that you don't want to do. You know, people are so wrapped up. I'm like, oh, I got to go to work. I have to work in a coal mine because that's what my community needs from me, which is fine if you want to do that. But if you're sacrificing true joys of what your passion is, if you were wanting to be a scientist, but then you end up working in coal mine and stuff, then I would say to you that that is not a life that you're really living. And once you're dead and gone, you may just absolutely regret not pursuing that because you've put so much fear into your own life. And I really want to stop people from doing that. That's one of my desires in life. One of my goals. My goal is to create a new path for human beings. Unfortunately, it also means I have to kind of 
reconstruct religion because I think the biggest issue is religion. Religion is the downfall of man in many ways. It's also a good thing, but in the modern culture, I don't think we're educated enough to understand what it means to have a religion and serve it correctly. Uh, it's become this weird thing. So that's why I kind of, my, I kept my YouTube ontology as, you know, subtly I talk about religion here and I want to do art about mythology and religion. Hey, living in the moment is the best thing you can do, Krusty. Um, but yeah, I'm doing my best to try to fix religion. So I think if we can fix religion, a lot of people can let go of all the stuff that holds them down. I'm not against religion. I'm just not for the ignorance that comes with a lot of it. And I was raised in religion myself. and I want to kind of free people from it. But since I've been trying to do that, I have found a lot of backlash because people don't really like to think on their own. They like to be told what they want to do. So it's a weird, weird thing. But that's my role in life, I found out, is not to like be a social justice person in a way of like, oh, we've got to fight for Greenpeace or whatever. And I think, you know, that's great. But mine is on the religious side of things. If you want to serve a God and do whatever you want, go be it. But if you want to serve a God and tear people down in the process, that's not, that's not a good thing. So I want to educate people because I don't want to tear them down either. Teach them about the things that they never learned. Meanwhile, they won't even share a nickel of the wealth they own. You're right. You're absolutely right. People don't want to be... People are so greedy these days. Yeah, it's rough stuff. <sighs> you know, it's interesting to think that you know, you, you live about 80 years, an average life these days. If you're healthy and you don't get cancers for some stupid reason, you, you live about 80 years, you know, 80 years or 70 years, you die. I'm already through more than half of that. And uh, when I look back at my life and I go, what is it the things that I regret? What are the things that I wish I would change, right? There's a lot of things I, I wish I could change, right? Like some of the bad decisions I made and all that stuff. But you can't really change those because those things are the things that kind of make you who you are. So when I look at that, I go, okay, well, if I didn't do that, then would I have ever learned this lesson, you know? And would I have done this or that? And it's probably not, you know, I wouldn't have. So I have to look at it in a different light. And I go, well, what are the things that I would want to pursue to change the world around me? Because... A lot of us think that we don't have the ability to change the world around us, but we actually do. We have a lot of power. Each and every one of us have a lot of power. Um, think of it this way. Da Vinci probably didn't think he was changing anything. He was just trying to learn so he could master and impress the, the, uh, the elites around him so that way he could get more work. But he didn't realize that he changed people's culture the way they wanted to draw and and process like you know different drawing styles and all these different things and that's that's just how it works we don't realize how much we influence the world in front of us the future because we don't think about the future enough you know i know we live in the moment but we also have to take into consideration that you know the future generation will have to learn from us uh, all, all of the time. And if you just become a normal citizen 
and just die with a win, which is fine. It's absolutely fine. There's no pressure to try to be anybody. But if you have the opportunity to be somebody, do you seize the moment? Do you take it? You know? And I've looked at my life and go, I'm a nobody. You know, I'm a nobody. I'm just a dude who, who's named Joshua Lamb who lives in the... I lived in Texas. I lived around the countries and stuff like that. But I don't have anything of value. I didn't even finish. I don't have a college degree. You know what I mean? Um, so what good is it that I'm not a Harvard student? I'm not a president. You know, all these things. But then I met a few people in my life that were just random past buyers. Random... Uh, just citizens, and they changed my life completely because they just spent time with me for a moment. And I realized, you know, all the great people in the world probably never thought they were going to be great. But if they did, then that means that they took a moment of their life and said, you know what, I'm going to do something extraordinary, and I'm going to make a moment of my life and change it. I'm going to change the course of history through the fact that I get to live and people can listen to me. I can yell at the top of my lungs and change people's hearts. And it's true. You know, you can take Ghibli, right? Ghibli films with like Totoro and Spirited Away and all these animations. He probably didn't think he was going to match up compared to all the other animators in his, his region or time or whatever. But he's like, I want to tell stories that I want to tell. And they touch the hearts of so many people and probably change the way people look at life. And even if you change one person, that's more than you could ever imagine, right? People want to change thousands, like, you know, whatever. But changing just one person is a good, very good start because that one person can influence many others and it can influence many others and so on. So I always think that, like, okay, my art has to mean something because... I don't want to just paint and draw for myself. I mean, it's fine to do that, but I have the burden of thinking that religion needs to be altered a little bit. And I may be wrong. I may not be actually accurate in many of it, but I'm going to try. And I think when I die, if someone, even if if it's someone 30 years later or 100 years later sees my work and goes, I get what Josh Lamb was trying to do, then I will feel success in it. You know? And you're right, Yuko. For people that we meet less than a couple minutes, like... They can change your entire trajectory of who you are and how you live. I mean, honestly, there are more instances of those people in my life that change the way I I do life because they spend a couple minutes with me. You know, and they don't have to be rich or famous. Some of the best people were homeless. Some of the best people were these people who were just walking by. And I remember this old man in Japan. He stopped me in the middle of my filming of like just this rock band I was doing. He stopped me and he he wanted to talk about the war because he served in the war. He spoke Japanese the entire time and he used broken English when he could. But just the fact that I understood a little bit of what he was saying, I didn't even understand the full thing. It changed my whole entire trajectory of my life because I stopped thinking of the elderly as people who just are, you know, wanting something or whatever, but I saw them as like, you know, people who had something to say. They lived a life that I was going to live, the exact same life as I was going to live, if not worse, because they, you know, intelligence has grown a lot. Um, but yeah, My best friend I've ever known in my life was this guy named John. He was a homeless guy at the church that I grew up in. And he was this he was like 30 years old. His hair was pulled out. He smelled like trash. I mean, he was brutal. Uh, but he didn't talk. He had some kind of mental disability a little bit. But he would always pass out these Chinese fortune cookies. 
and they would have these beautiful like little scriptures of of the Bible in it. They're beautiful, really sweet scriptures, you know, like Jesus loves you and stuff like that. And the congregation, the entire church, would treat them like, you know, whatever, blah, you know. And he was the only person who would sit beside me in church to just, he wouldn't even say anything. He would just, just by him sitting beside me, it was an encouragement because none of the other kids in in, in the church would sit beside me. They always thought, they were, you know, it's kind of a racist church. Um, But like, I always thought that was the most beautiful thing. And I was like, you know what? If I've ever seen an angel in my life, it was this homeless guy named John, you know, and most people would be like, oh, well, who's, who, who do you look up to, you know, Obama or something, I don't know, whatever people think that they should look up to. And I'm like, I look up to this homeless guy. <laughs> he, in the end, he, he served me more information about the human culture and the human race than any other person I've ever met in my life. Um, and I wish I could see him again. I really do. I wish I could say hello and hi and see how he's doing. Um, but I guess, I, I mean, I lost contact with him and I don't know if he's even alive anymore. But, you know, it's weird how those kind of things happen. Yeah. So, I made it my goal for this YouTube channel, for the the products that I create to kind of give life to people and imagination to people in my religious studies and stuff. Hopefully I'll be able to, I want my YouTube, I want to start doing an actual series on YouTube to actually talk about religious misunderstandings because I think a lot of people hate each other because you believe in this or I believe in that or blah, 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 you know, but like. Why does that even matter? It's not like you can control or produce any kind of evidence for it, but you're willing to destroy someone's heart for it. And uh, I think I want to try a Mr. Rogers approach to it. We'll see. We'll see. Oh, that's great, Yuko. So they stopped smoking because you mentioned it. Wow, that's wild, you know? It's weird that people, you know, would take advice from a person that, you know, you would never think, like, why would someone listen to me? You know, it's a pretty beautiful thing. I think that's a wonderful thing. I, uh, well, that's great. That's fantastic because, first of all, cigarettes are bad, but that's wild, you know, that's wild. Oh, yeah? Well, that's rad. I don't know what advice I give. I don't give much advice. It must be you, Yuko. It can't be me. Um, I don't give much advice. <laughs> I should. I should teach. But you know what the hard thing is? The honest truth of why I don't, I'm not teaching here on the channel much is because I'm trying to withhold myself from teaching and that's because I want to, I have to charge on my Patreon some like of those techniques and stuff because I need to make an income. Like I can't survive, I can't so survive in LA without having some kind of income. And the only way I can make income is to be a teacher here in some form or format. So I do apologize. It's not my intent to be mean or like with, withhold information, but I have to be like calculative of what information I do give out when I could be making some kind of career for myself because I have to provide for, you know, my family too. 
It has nothing to do with me wanting to be a jerk or anything like that. That's for sure. Um, but I try to give as much as I can when I can. You know? Like, I could teach you about, like, the technical stuff is what I'll probably keep anyways, is, like, brush strokes using, you know, this kind of stuff. Placing down dark colors in order to create shadows and stuff like that. But for the most part, I give you as much as I can give. But all to say is that I hope that we as the human race and you as an artist, because you guys are artists and I'm really, you know, I'm proud that you guys are artists because it's hard to be an artist in this time period where, you know, it's all about likes and comments and subscribers and nonsense. Being brave is being an artist. I did give it our advice. Okay. Well, if I did, Right on. Don't remember, but okay. Um, but because you guys are artists, it's good. I think it's important for us as artists to encourage each other. Um, okay. Thank you, Yuko. Now that I know. Thanks, Frozzy. I appreciate it. I hope that my art advice does help. It's extremely hard to be, you know, advising any kind of art skills with when I'm doing live stream. My next video, I'm almost done editing my darn next video of how to create an ink drawing uh, on a very simple platform of like paper, the ink you would use, and the style format. But that's it. I'm doing a simple YouTube video. Um, it should be up tomorrow or the next day. Um, yeah. But anyways, I'm glad that something I say is helping. But I think you as artists are phenomenal because look at this. If you look at my live stream, I have Krusty, I have Frozzy, I have you, Yuko, I have uh, Megs, I have uh, TF. I have all these people here that I've never met. I've never met you guys and you've never met me. Um, <laughs> you're not going to tell me about what you're talking about. But I've met you guys uh, and girls. Oh, over this YouTube live stream thing and how amazing is that that we get to chat and kind of get to know each other's you know very short amounts but it's enough to say oh this is an artist and this is an artist I encourage and this is an artist that I I want to progress and do well and you know if I were to ever to meet you guys I'm sure that you would not look like what I think you look like but because we know each other already a little bit, you know, it's amazing. Um, and we couldn't have that without the internet, which I'm very thankful for the internet on that aspect because um, it's just really rad. It's really rad. Oh, thanks, Krusty. I really appreciate that. I do. I, I always wonder whether or not my teachings are even getting across or if like these videos are giving any information that's helpful. Just me just chatting like a, a numb skull, you know, <laughs> which is probably what it really is. is me just being a little bit, you know, egotistical in a sense. Um, but you know, I'm, I hope, I hope. And if not, then at least we can have a good place. We can talk and chat about things and be artists and feel free. That's what I really want. I want you to feel free to be an artist and talk about the things that you, you know, want to learn and each other help each other. Like, you know, Yuko was helping out people with books and stuff of that would help out um, uh, in perspective and different things. And that's that's what I want. I want this community. I think you know what I think it is. It's because I don't have a community myself. I. Uh, I grew up in a, when I was in, even in high school, I remember being in high school and being like, you know, all my art friends were doing these weird stuff that didn't relate to me and no one wanted to help me out. And then in college, it was just weird. And then as I grew older, none of my friends really did art. So it was really hard to like find people who related to my art. Like no one would know what I'm doing right now. No one would care. That's what the problem was. No one would care. 
they would look at this and be like, oh, cool stuff, Josh. Great job. And I'd be like, oh, okay. I get what I, I get where you're coming from. But uh, who's the person who goes, oh, dude, I love the fire. Or I want to I wanna see this person here. I want to do this. Like, that's what I want. I want people to get involved in the imagination process. So it's amazing that we have a YouTube. And the same goes if you were to create your own YouTube, which I totally encourage, uh, that we be able to just like, you know what it is? It's like the modern poker night at someone's basement. You know, and that's that's what I want. And I'm very happy that I have that with you guys. It's it's fantastic. Oh, that's why you turn to books. Yeah, I get that. I totally get that. Books are the one of the best friends too because you feel like someone's talking to you directly, which is great. Um Yeah, I totally feel you there. I turn to a lot of books. A lot of comic book stuff, uh tutorial books. Uh Marvel had to come out with a whole bunch of tutorial books and stuff. I studied those bad boys left and right and drew so many copies of that. Yeah, it's weird that we don't have, like, I feel like I, w I always wondered if, like, other artists didn't have art friends. So you guys don't have art friends. Like, man, how does that work? Why do we not have art friends? Like, is no one that interesting around our, our friend group? Like, I don't get it. I should have art friends, man. Even my artist buddies that do art, they don't even like like art the way I like art, which is kind of mind blowing, a little bit more mind blowing. Yeah, I agree. Seeing how artists see the best. Look how I just ruined this painting by uh, <laughs> putting too much dark brown here. Darn me. Uh, it's okay, though. I don't have any groaning up. Because mom never wanted to let me go in an art school. Oh, man. Didn't want you to go to art school, huh? You know what? That sucks. But I, I feel you. I feel you on that. I was denied my art a lot of my time growing up. I failed most of my school classes. And my parents really, really pissed off at me. Because they're like, Josh, you need to study. You need to do math. You need to do all these things to become a doctor. I mean, I was raised in an Asian family, so being a doctor was very important. Uh, but I, I hated the responsibility of trying to be a doctor. That's ridiculous. Like, no way on earth. Um, so in which I get the whole idea of, like, not being able to go to art school. But then finally when I got older, they were like, okay, Josh, you should go to art school. I'm like, well, a little too late. I kind of gave up at this point because I thought he wanted me to learn all these technical things. Um, but as an adult, we should have art community. We should have art friends where we can talk about these things. And watercolors are the OG markers. Okay, I cleaned it up a little bit. It's still a little rough. I got to lighten it up. I got to pull some of that color out. Oops, not that way. Ooh. Okay, I, I screwed that up. Oh, Josh. You're right, Yuko. I have to put the contrast elsewhere. <laughs> You're good. You got a great eye. You got that artist's eye. You're like, oh, now he's got to put it somewhere else. Darn it. 
You never take an art class, Krusty. Oh man, it's okay though. They're not nothing necessary. Uh, they're fun though. Some of them are fun. Uh, I'm excited to start taking some art classes again. Um, darn me, son of a gun! I can't believe I did that with the color. Yeesh. But you're right. You're right, Yuko. You got the right eye. So I'm going to take some brown. I'm going to mix it in with the green here. And make a, a dookie brown. Kind of not dookie. It's more like a it's more like a constipated brown. And then we're going to go in here and add more green. And the contrast will be right here. Look at that, look at that, so hot, hot. Well, so I had some blue here, you know what I mean? There was blue here, but I got rid of the blue because it didn't really merge with the fact that there was fire here going onto a green dragon. And if I had a blue head and some other blue areas, it just didn't really feel right. I wanted this kind of battle to be at nighttime and in a forest. So it was just really hard to kind of depict what I would color. I think if I add a blue, it'd just be too intense, honestly. Uh, but I get what you're saying. I do get what you're saying. It's been one of my battles in my mind. Oh, oldest child's... As a teacher, nurse, or doctor, yeah, I know. Well, then you understand fully, Yuko. Uh, you fully get it. It's a rough life, you know, trying to be, trying to fulfill these obligations by family and, you know, family members and stuff. But your true heart is probably the artist, you know. I want to be an artist. I want to be an artist that talks and like draws for. You know, archaeology, my biggest influence is Indiana Jones, you know. I'm a big Indiana Jones fan. Huge. Um, not to the point where I nerd out about his birthday and all that kind of stuff. But, like, I love archaeology when it comes to, like, the Indiana Jones of, like, looking for things that have never been discovered, questioning things that never been questioned. And, uh... You know, that's why I showed you guys yesterday the, the you know, one of the archaeological. I have a couple ar other archaeological finds I have that are really dope. Um, you know, thousands of years old kind of stuff. But I'm going to save that for other days. And But I want to be able to talk about these things and draw about them and, like, discover them, you know? I think that's what my calling is. I got to figure out, like, you know, at the end of my days, what do I want to be appreciative about? One, you know, being a good husband would be good. Uh, and two, um, discovering things that people, when they look back and go, Joshua Lamb wrote this book on, on art and the ancient cultures of, you know, Jewish Judaism or something and drew pictures that were revolutionary. Oh, man, I would love that. Now, am I that good? Do I think I'm that like a professional like that? No. But does it mean I should stop trying? Definitely not. I'm going to try it to the end of my days. <laughs> well, Yuko, hey, you shouldn't let that bother you. Bulgarians are Bulgarians. <laughs> um, you know, I when I go to Korea and they ask me, Josh, like, what are you doing, right? Like, none of my, all my family members are nurses and doctors and stuff. And they're like, what are you doing? I'm like, um, I'm drawing. I don't know. I'm a teacher. I don't know what I'm doing tomorrow. Oh, I get the same handshake, but I get a bow. I don't get the, I don't get the handshake. I get a bow. I bow, and they look, they bow to me with like pathetic <laughs> you know but like it's okay it's a-okay because it's kind of fun at the same time because we get we get to look at life in a different light and get to realize that 
no one has the answer. And in their old age, with their judgment and stuff like that, they don't know any better either. They're just big kids, just like anyone else. They're not super mature. Oh, they could be mafia members. They could be, um, they could be construction work. They could work in mines. They can act like adults all they want. You know what I mean? Or what we think is like a mature adult, at least. Um, but at the end of the day, you'll be f- you'll be seventy six one day too, and, and they're seventy six and just looking at it, trying to act like they're mature, but really they're still that kid inside. They're still the seventeen year old who wants to let loose. That's the biggest misconception that a lot of people don't realize. No matter how old you get, you're still you, you know, and you stops at like 21 years old. (laughs) So it's, you know, I think my, like my grandfather, he, he demanded respect. He's this Korean old mafia leader kind of dude. And he would demand respect. And, I just kind of giggled because I was like, you know, you're just trying to be somebody when you feel like you've lost time and you don't know what to do. So you think you need to be the mature old man that you've seen on TV or, you know, all these things. But in reality, you would trade everything to go back in time and be a 17 year old again and go to school and high school. Like you would give everything. And that, that notion alone You know, not to say that that should help you disrespect people. You shouldn't disrespect age, but it should also help you go, hey, you know, I don't need to, I don't need to stress on when people put pressure on me about certain things that I do. Because, you know, the story of like, I go back to Christianity because it's one of the things I grew up with, but Jesus Christ died at 33 years old. A lot of the goofballs that I meet that condemn me about questioning the Bible and stuff like that are older, like 45, 50, uh, 55 year old people. And even Jesus at his age of 30 to 33 was being wrecked on by probably the same age, 50 year old, 60 year old rabbis and Pharisees and Sadducees and Essenes. And he was trying to teach them something great, right? Um, but yeah, you know, like, how do they, <laughs> you know, like, oof. just because you're old, you shouldn't have an authority over the younger. And as us and our age, if we're older than the young little kid, now if a kid says something stupid, stupid, that's fine. But if they're like trying to be intellectual in their age, you know, we should give them a, th- give them a thought, a, a moment to think about what they're saying, because they might actually have something that might hit hard. And um, I just don't think the generation, the baby boomers and up or below really think about. So don't let that get to you. Don't let them pressure you. Transvestite (laughs) to green (laughs) national... Dang, you go. Um, the Bulgarian stereotype. Interesting. So what would you say is this, the Bulgarian stereotype usually, though? I would love to know. Interesting. So a restaurant. I don't even know what that means. Never. Ah, I see. I see. They need to understand not everyone can work in those fields. Yeah, I agree. It's very true. They definitely need to understand those things. Europeans probably need to learn that more than anything. They're very stuck on their old ways in those cultures. 
my buddy's from uh, Austria, and he, yeah, he's like, yeah, they don't, they don't move, they don't move at all. They just stay in their ways, and I think that everybody should kind of mold to their ideas and stuff. I don't know. I don't know Europeans very well, but I would love to be there. I would love to be in Europe. Hope to move there one day. Not bringing money. <laughs> you go. I think that's every every culture's man. <laughs> they're semi welcoming. They're alcoholics, but they're macho husbands and not bringing in any money. That is, you just described. Koreans, Americans, um, you didn't describe Japanese though, I don't think, I think they actually bring in money, but they're not macho either, um, but every other one other than that, okay, not Chinese either, but most of the rest of the world, that's what we try to progress as, I hate the macho thing, it's weird, find the meme, this is the smallest Bulgarian. <laughs> <laughs> what? Okay, I'll look for that. I'll look for it. That sounds funny. I want to know what the smallest Bulgarian is. What is that? That sounds hilarious. Oh my gosh. So have you been to Bulgaria or do you live in Bulgaria? You don't live in Bulgaria. Your time zone wouldn't work out with the way you're watching this. Um, but have, you, know, you obviously have been to Bulgaria, right? You enjoy the, the, you don't, you maybe it sounds like you don't enjoy the community there, but do you like the countryside and the, the way it like is? I've never been there. I, I hope to go one day. Yeah, you're right. Not every, not every culture has the same stereotype. You're right. You're right. You're right. Get me there. Almost, though. Almost, almost. A lot of them are the macho thing these days. Yeah, interesting. I would love to go to Bulgaria. Well, you know, as the world grows differently, it's interesting because we, um, we're we becoming more mixed, you know? We're becoming a little bit more... Back in the day, the Bulgarians put up serious fights on the Romans. Oh, yeah, sure. Who didn't put up a good fight with the Romans? The Romans were freaking... Everybody wanted to fight them. The Romans were beasts. They were top dogs. You have to admit they had one hell of a hell of a culture, the Romans. Taking on everybody. You know, yeah. So you guys must have traveled somewhat, I'm guessing. Have you any of y'all uh, traveled across the planet and like really enjoyed another culture or life uh, in a different country? I would love to know because I'm a big traveler and I love traveling. And uh, I'd love to know what people like experience and how they like other cultures. Yeah, they wiped out so many people. The thing I was sold that I'm to speak English. I would have no issue communicating it everywhere in the world, including Bulgaria. Oh, nice, you go. Nice. So, is is English your second language then, you go? I never got their back turned on. All, but guess what? I never got their back. Oh, nice, good. 
right? I hope I'm reading that sentence right. You never got your, they never betrayed, like, turned their back on you and stuff. Oh, it's whales. How was that? You know, I wonder if whales even, like, how the Welsh were, like, um, how they respond to different cultures, especially, you know, um, foreigners or anything like that. I feel like they'd be kind of judgmental, but that's just based off of, like, movies and TV shows. Oh, I see. Well, interesting. So you're saying that the, once you started speaking English, it was a bad thing? The English dominate so many things. It's weird how they get away with so much of what they did. I'm surprised the rest of the world isn't pissed at them and just wants to like get revenge because they just straight up uh, colonized everything, especially through religion, which is wild. Oh, really? I didn't know that. I thought the Irish and like the other countries that were conquered by them within the same the same island and stuff like that were kind of pissed at them and stuff for doing such a thing. I don't know. I need to do my studies on European culture. Um, I've only done small portions of studies and very segmented. Oh, I see. Interesting. Well, I'm there with you. My first language was actually Korean, and then I, f I had a, my second, my well, side, I wouldn't say second language. I would say my partner language is English and Korean, but then I had to leave Korean because I was raised in a redneck school that didn't, there was no Korean. So, you know, the country, the Texans with cowboys and stuff, no one spoke Korean. So I had to forget it. And once I forgot it, it was gone. Now I can't even speak it well. I can understand it, but I can't I can't get it back. Prince of Wales didn't want to Oh, interesting. Just surrendered. Well, you know, sometimes surrendering is the best way to protect your, your people. I wouldn't know I don't have a people to, you know, surrender. But if I did I'd probably surrender them if I don't want them to die. So much history I need to learn. So much fun. So much fun to learn all this history and stuff. You guys are great. I'm glad to know all this stuff about you all. This is cool. You'll have such really wild, cool stories, you know, <laughs> like you have gone through so much and like got to experience so much like this is wild. Most most people I know have never got to experience these things that y'all are going through. Goodness. What great value, you know. <laughs> the bad guys won most of the time. Don't they always? Don't they always? It's 
Sad that they do. Sad that they do. History is an interesting thing. Oh, thank you, Yuko. Yeah, I think it's coming together. I think I need to add a little bit more red here uh, to the face of the blue dragon. I think he's getting a little sloppy. But you're right, it, it is actually coming together a little bit. I'm starting to figure out watercolors a little bit better, you know? They're taking a lot of brain power, though. My brain is, like, overworking right now, trying to figure out, like, how to make this all work. You know what's been bothering me? is I've been watching this movie called Taken with Liam Neeson. And um, I watched Taken 1 yesterday, and I watched Taken 2 today. And I'm just thinking about, like, if I was a father, like, what extremes would I go to get my my daughter or wife back? Like... I, I think it's one of those cool things like they made this movie about for four fathers. <laughs> you know, I'm not even a father, but like if you were a dad, this is exactly why you tell your daughter to take her phone and make sure she calls you when she goes to the plane and stuff like that. But that movie kind of reminded me. I'm sorry, I'm, this is totally off topic. Um, but like I just like thinking about like, man, what extreme would I go to if I had my child being taken by, you know, traffickers or something like that I would not sleep I would destroy the whole country if I had to and my life would be a forfeit you know what I mean and um, I think that's why that movie did so well because people are like yeah 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 I agree with you if someone took my daughter they'd be screwed <laughs> like I would take down entire gangs you know sorry way off topic I just my brain has kind of been on that, thinking about that half the day. Um, back on track of the dragon theme. Um, yeah. Watercolor seems to be semi-forgiving in many ways, so that's good. I mean, it's still kind of muggy, though. You know what I mean? Like, if you look at it, it's kind of muggy. I don't know. I think with the contrast that down here, with this being so dark, it looks really great. So I'm going to have to do is just one more layer of color and make it really dark. So here's like the main coloring of it. But I think I can, I can really put in the dark, dark, darks in there. And then once it's done, uh, I'm going to go over with pen again and kind of get these gritty lines in and then be finished with more of an ink design the color would be on there you know i think that's what i'm going to have to do to really stabilize this piece but i don't know if i want to do that on a on a live stream i think i want to just wait and do that on my personal time um because i need to finish up this um i mean i've been doing this digital um thundercats one that's been taking me a while because i've been trying to create each character on their own so i can do an animation thing um so it's actually taking me more time than I wanted. We'll see. <laughs> Thank you, Yuko. I really appreciate your, your your encouragement. Yeah, it might be it might actually be the brand, but I think I'm just putting too many layers of different colors on it and like not paying it. I don't know, you know, I don't do watercolor. This is my second time to do watercolor since I was in high school, which was 20 years ago. Was it 20 years ago? 
23 years ago, something like that. Oh, yeah, you're going to love the Thundercats. The Thundercats is looking on point. I am loving it. It is. It gets me excited in my soul because it looks so good, but it is also taking a lot of taxing energy from me to get it done. So um, still wet. So, you know, I'll, um, once I get that done, I think tomorrow, though, I'm going to spend some time doing some of my documentary stuff. So I'm not going to actually draw as much. I'll do live stream, of course, at night. But I'm not going to spend time on my drawings. So I'm going to, you know, it's a process. It takes weeks and stuff to do art. Um, but, you know, we'll get it done. We'll get it done and it'll look great. It'll look fine. Um you guys will get to enjoy the animation part of the Thundercats because I'm going to have it like kind of um, oh thank you yeah I know right it's not bad Arches watercolor paper. Dennis, thank you. Arches, let me write that down. Arches, arches. Because I'm going to forget that. Let me write it on here. Arches. Thank you, Dennis. Yeah, I've been using just, you know, whatever I get from Michael's or uh, Home Hobby Lobby or whatever it's called. Uh, watercolor paper. I mean, it's not brutally bad. It's smooth. I mean, it's a little puffy from the water sog. But, oh, cotton paper. You know, I've heard of cotton paper. I've never tried it. I'm very curious what, what, what cotton paper is like. Is it like smoother or is it thicker? What is it? What is it? What's the difference between water, uh, cotton paper and, you know, normal watercolor paper you get from the store hundred percent cotton so it's better to get hundred percent cotton paper is that what you're telling me that sounds intense they don't mix it with anything oh dang okay Makes it sound expensive. <laughs> Can take more of a beating. Oh, interesting. Okay, that's probably what it is then because I'm pushing so hard on the, on the paper and stuff. It's probably like getting tore up. I can feel it getting tore up. You guys probably can't see it on camera, but yeah, it's the... Um, the frizziness of the paper is actually pulling up. Yeah, 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 yeah. I get that. Okay, okay. See? I'm learning stuff right now. Interesting. These are the things I should know before I get started. <laughs> It's not much more money. Uh, okay, then I'll look it up on Amazon or something like that or see that this is our store to buy. You can find mixes of cellulose paper and cotton, but they are less quality than 100%. So 100% cotton, cotton <laughs> my accent, cotton is the best. Um, okay, so I'm going to look for 100% cotton. That's good to know. Super good to know. Thank you. That is like, that's prime information. See, had I known that before, I would have started with 100% cotton, but I just started with whatever I had. Um, so I blame you guys. It's a, your fault. Uh, you should feel guilty. Um, just kidding. But yeah, so I didn't know that. Um, interesting, interesting. Hundred percent cotton. 
All right. Good to know. But will I be doing watercolor again is the question. I don't know. I'm terrified of it. It's brutally difficult. Painfully difficult to let you know. I'm going to add some red blood here. Well, that's not bloody. There we go. Look at that. I learned so much today. Good job. Thank you, guys. Appreciate that. Super appreciate the uh, information. We're almost done for today. I am ending the live stream in a few moments. Um, yeah, you guys help me a lot. Look how much, how far we've come. Looking way better than yesterday. Yesterday was brutally bad. It was like, ugh. It was like a retro, you know. Yeah. Thank you, Yuko. Thank you, Dennis. Mucho gracias. And um, so, yeah. So now, I think, because the way I understand watercolor a little bit more, he's not very contrasted. That's because I haven't darkened the wing behind him. I think once I darken the wing behind him, his head will pop back out, even though it's dark right now. It's kind of merging the same color. His head is the same. His head is, the fire head is not really coming out. So I need to darken this area here. Um, I think this feels dry. So let me try that actually right now before I get off the live stream. I'm going to throw in some red and black together. And we're going to... Yeah, there we go. Yeah, so his head's popping out now. That's good. Okay. Then we can do it here. Ah, freaking commercial. Hey, 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 hey. Shoot, you don't get to advertise for free here on my channel. Okay, yeah, on camera it looks a lot better. Let me blend it in a little better. There we go. Okay. And there's some darks that should be put here. I should make that a little bit darker. The brights here from the fire should kind of highlight over here, but I think that's the light brown that I have. So that means that this will need to be much darker. Um, the tail has to be really dark. This has to be really dark. This has to be really dark. Um, But honestly, it's not looking too bad. It's not like... Um, the reason why I think it's not looking too bad, even though it does kind of look bad to me, is because once I go over it with the inking details and putting like lines into these things, the color will kind of be covered up a little bit, and then you'll get this different intricate uh, detailing that I wanted to build. This was all simple inking. The detail inking will come afterwards. Hey, Krusty, 
Go make some dreams. Go have some wild dreams. Dream of dragons and zombies and an apocalypse that you're fighting as a knight, destroying the world's greatest enemy. You know? I wish I had dreams like that. Sometimes I do. It's fantastic. I love nightmare dreams. They're the best. Um, Go have fun. Good night, Krusty. The caveman. Um, but I think we're done too anyways because I'm done. I'm going to look up this paper. Thank you, Dennis, for the Arches paper idea. I'm definitely going to have to get some of that. Um, oh, it's even, even my alarm says to go to sleep. How funny. Uh, thank you for watching. And I think we're done for tonight, right? Yuko, thank you. Uh, Frozzy, thank you. Everybody, thank you, thank you, thank you. It was very fun tonight. I really appreciate all the info and, you know, cultural stuff. But here we go. We got the Zemi drawing coming together. Look at look at it coming together. Three-headed dragon. Watercolor. You know, when this is done, hopefully it'll look good. And, uh, yeah. I'm excited. It's it's almost there. It's like it's like seventy percent there, I think, or sixty five percent. So it's looking good. Anyways, y'all have a great night. Get some rest. Have fun. Draw, and if you're creative, go out and create. That's what you're meant to do. Um, anyways, you guys rule, and I will see y'all tomorrow if y'all are on. And please join the Discord if you haven't already. Please like and subscribe to the channel. And yeah, I also have a Patreon. You can join for free to get some cool updates whenever I post them. But yeah, see you guys soon.